This is gonna hurt, isn't it? Following the underperformance of Superman Returns, which is still some bullshit, there's still hope. Warner Brothers began taking pitches from comic writers, screenwriters, and directors on how to successfully reboot the franchise. The first came from Matthew Vaughn and Mark Miller, which would have been an eight hour trilogy with each installment being released a year apart, similar to the Lord of the Rings films, and would have starred Charlie Cox as the titular character. The trilogy would have reportedly chronicled Superman's life from the early days of Krypton, culminating in the finale where he loses his powers after the sun starts to go supernova. However, the studio wasn't interested, so it never materialized. Because because that sounded interesting. The world is about to come to an end. As the years went by, Grant Morrison, Mark Wade, Jeff Johns, McGee, quite possibly the whitest name that you could come up with, let's talk about it, and Brad Meltzer were among those who pitched their ideas for a new Superman film, but the studio didn't like any of them. Furthermore, the family of Jerry Siegel, the co-creator of the character, had recaptured 50% of the rights to Superman's origins, meaning that if a new film wasn't produced by 2011, they would be able to sue the studio for any lost revenue, prompting them to prioritize the production of another movie. Well, I think you're blowing it a little out of proportion. No. Things didn't move along until production meetings for The Dark Knight Rises, when writer David Goyer was chatting with a little known chap you might have heard of called Christopher Nolan, and he pitched a story about how to present Superman in a modern context. Where well, you see it's an alien with supernatural powers, so logically we've got to treat it as realistically as possible. I want to hear what he has to say. Nolan was impressed with Goya's idea, taking it to Warner Brothers, who loved it and instantly hired both of them to produce and write respectively based on the critical and commercial success of The Dark Knight. Nolan was a huge fan of the original Richard Donner films and had also been an admirer of Superman Returns. Smart man. I know, it's crazy, right? And he was keen to produce his own take on the iconic character, but he was against directing the movie himself, feeling that he had already done all he could do with a superhero story following his Batman trilogy. He even toyed with the idea of keeping the movie in continuity with the Dark Knight films, but ultimately decided against it, feeling that this movie should stand on its own. What happened? When selecting a director, Guillermo del Toro was approached having worked with Goya on Blade 2, but he turned it down as he was already committed to making an adaptation of The Mountain of madness which never got made. Never gonna happen. Robert Zemeckis was then approached but he also turned it down. Ben Affleck was then asked but he rejected it due to his inexperience working with extensive visual effects and other considerations included Duncan Jones, Darren Aronofsky, Jonathan Liebsman, Matt Reeves and Tony Scott until they finally settled on Zack Snyder. I will find him! When casting the titular Man of Steel, Brandon Routh was open to returning to the series until Snyder and Nolan decided that they wanted nothing that could possibly tie them back to previous incarnations. Matthew Good, Army Hammer, Zac Efron, I could see it. But by then it was too late. Jamie Dornan, Joey Manganiello, Colin O'Donoghue, and Tyler Hochelin were all considered until finally selecting Hollywood's favorite plank of wood, Henry Cavill. But he's hot, so who cares? Funnily enough, Cavill had actually almost played the part twice before, having narrowly missed out on the part in Returns, and had also been cast in a failed production called Superman Flyby before it was scrapped. Well, they were pretty impressive. But even funnier is that Cavill actually missed the call from Snyder to inform him that he had been selected because he was too busy playing World of Warcraft. But like, did you hear the phone ringing? I did. And you chose to ignore it? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> did you win the video game? <laughs> Sadly, no. <laughs> God, Clark really is a nerd, isn't he? I have so many questions. However, his casting was also really controversial, as many questioned the appropriateness of a British actor playing an American icon like Superman. I want this story out there. Once he was cast, Cavill underwent a strict diet and training regime, eating up to 5,000 calories a day and working out for up to 14 hours a week, insisting that the character's muscular physique had to be real. And you bet he'll show it off any chance he gets! For the role of Lois Lane, a long list of actresses were sought for the part, including Kristen Stewart, Zoe Saldana, Emmy Rossum, Margot Robbie, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, A Toaster, Kristen Bell, Charlotte Riley, Lake Bell, Jessica Biel, The Fat Controller, Olivia Wilde, and Mila Kunis, until Amy Adams was selected, who also auditioned for both Returns and Flyby like Cavill, but didn't get either job. I'm noticing a pattern here. Whoa, just like that? Sean Penn and Clive Owen were both considered to play Cavill's father Jarrell before Russell Crowe was cast, while Viggo Mortensen and even Daniel Day-Lewis were considered for General Zod until the selection of Michael Shannon. Man, Papa Doc lost a rap battle and became an Avenger, and Eminem's stepdad took over Krypton. Detroit's fucked up! 
I have no idea why. Principal photography ran from August 2011 to February the following year in Chicago, with Snyder even choosing to shoot on film rather than on digital, as well as converting the footage into IMAX to create a greater cinematic experience. He also drew inspiration from anime like Dragon Ball Z and Birdie the Mighty for the epic action scenes. And Man of Steel was released on June the 10th, 2013 and was an immediate hit, grossing $668 million worldwide, becoming the most successful solo Superman film in history. But reactions from fans and critics alike were completely split down the middle, particularly regarding Cavill's performance as the lead. For every person who enjoyed the film and called it the best Superman adaptation since the Donner movies, there's not a lot of competition. <laughs> Is that all you've got? There were just as many people who lambasted it for not understanding the character. The setup is more or less the same to the old films, but they do add some new stuff. Like the original, we spent a good chunk of time in Krypton, starting with DC trying desperately to squeeze out a good movie. But my issue is that there isn't much identity. It looks like any generic CGI setting in the last 20 years. Nothing about it screams unique. It's just boring to look at. Does any of it even remotely resemble a Superman film? It's just so basic and so generic and so boring. Which is ultimately backed up by Russell Crowe giving the blandest and most boring performance as jor -El. Everything he says is so uninteresting and that's the problem. Everybody here is already dead. Give me control of the Codex. It's mostly a generic sci-fi film. In turn, General Zod is equally as generic. He wants some Kryptonian genetic codex mumbo jumbo, but Jarrell fuses it into his son before sending him away to escape. So revenge, track him down, murder plan, it's all so bland, but as a superhero film, it's fine. At the beginning, however, Shannon does give it his all. You can see that he is trying his best, but there's not any moment where I truly believe that he could take on Superman in a fight. He doesn't come across as particularly intimidating at all. I'll kill him. Oh. You'll be a god to them. Because if there's anything that Americans were accepting of in 2013, it was outsiders from another place. But I will admit, it does seem like a much bigger deal in this version when Kal-El gets sent to Earth. Before Russell Crowe supposedly dies from a single stab wound. What is this, Marvel? But he doesn't even fuck off. I am your father, Cal. His death is almost completely pointless because he shows up throughout the entire film anyway. I mean, I'm not sure how. He's not a hologram of the dead Jero like the old films who had pre-recorded responses. He literally interacts with people and responds specifically to them. How does any of this happen? Isn't that a good thing? And Shannon just gets worse as the movie progresses. So when he and Crow have scenes together, they've got no hope. I don't think Russell Crowe would know emotion if it bit him on the ass cheek. It's like they're constantly competing over who can better pass as a human being. And the answer is, it's a tie. Maybe. Although it does have some nice cinematography and some decent atmospheric moments as Krypton explodes. The problem with Henry Cavill's casting is, Henry Cavill's casting. I'm sorry, but at any point in this movie, does he show any kind of emotion? I mean, he smiles once. Well, that's something, I suppose. For the whole film, he just gives the exact same emotion no matter the scene. He's so boring. But failing that, just look at him. Why wouldn't anyone suspect that he's Superman? You mean that huge bulked up beefcake has superpowers? What? Sure, I think Efron would have been good, but I think he could still pass as a normal guy. Yeah, he's buff, but put a shot on him. He's a normal dude. He's not Henry UFC Cavill over there. What's worse is they continue the stupid running joke that somehow nobody recognizes who Clark is, but somehow they make it even dumber in this version. In the Donna films, he knows about his origins and powers pretty quickly. He goes about living life, grows up, gets a job, and only becomes Superman after 30 plus years of pretending to be a bumbling idiot to throw people off the scent. But in this one, we get flashbacks to him as a kid throughout because someone let Christopher Nolan into the editing room, but he stops burning structures from falling down in front of people. He saves a school bus from drowning in front of people. He saves Lois Lane's life and shows off his powers. I can do things that other people can't. I am Satan incarnate. <laughs> also, how the hell 
how can't he hear Lois following him? For the whole movie, she knows him as Clark and hides his identity, but Superman gets exposed and then tries to gain their trust, but then after all of this, we're supposed to believe that he could just get a regular job and not get recognized? The Reeves one worked because he was a twat for 30 years and then, oh, Superman is here. But him going around as Superman first and then popping on some glasses and acting exactly the same as Superman doesn't make any sense and nobody bats a fucking eye. Seriously, Clark acts no different to Superman in the entire movie. I can't be a part of this. Some of the effects suck. It's like they blew their budget on Krypton. But later on, they are pretty damn impressive with some awesome long shots. But they do try some new things that haven't really been done before. Unless they were in the bajillion Superman TV shows that I haven't seen, but that doesn't count. There's a flashback scene where he struggles to harness his powers as he can't cope with the super hearing, seeing through people's skins, before his mum shows up in record time. What's wrong with me, mum? You're in the DCEU. My people. I know where I come from now. Jersey. A scene that was filmed but cut from the opening involved Jonathan and Martha Kent Why did you say that name? taking baby Kal out to the doctors for a hearing test, only for the baby to scream and blow out all of the windows. And I actually think that would have been cool. To the film's credit, they do a great job hiring a bunch of lookalikes for the flashback scenes as well. But despite his shit identity keeping skills, I do really like the school bus scene as he rescues everyone, including his own bully. Before it's ruined by... What was I supposed to do? Just let him die? Maybe. One more time. What was I supposed to do? Just let him die? Maybe. <laughs> now I've heard people say, Hey, he doesn't say let them die. He says, maybe let them die. Well, it's his way of saying he doesn't know. And that's what's so great about it. Well, if that's the case, here's an idea. Say you don't know! I get it, there's a conflict, should he be interfering? This is a theme explored in the Donna films, but the father and mentor of our hero just said he should have let a bunch of school kids die. But it's okay, because then we get a tornado scene with Kevin Costner, who I will admit is actually pretty good in this. Tells Clark to not save anyone, while he then saves everyone. I mean, Clark could easily do something without everyone assuming that he's an alien. He doesn't have to fly. He can just run around and help them. There's a big leap from that. And E.T. But instead we get Costner deciding to fart ass about and tells Clark to not save him as a tornado can fly his ass to an early grave. What? Makes even less sense because Costner clearly encourages him to save people. You just have to decide what kind of man you want to grow up to be, Clark, because whoever that man is, good character or bad, he's... He's gonna change the world. He does handle it well when he gets into fights but refuses to hit back. Though he's a petty bastard who wrecks the guy's truck instead. Throughout the film, he learns when to pick his battles, which is some pretty cool character growth. The problem is, there's not much to anyone else's character, really. It's also bland and generic. They go back to the roots of the early comics when he doesn't actually fly at first, instead leaping great distances. And it's interesting to see him struggle to learn to fly. And I will admit, I think this is the closest that a movie has ever gotten to delivering the Jesus message metaphor correctly. He masters his powers and clearly actually enjoys it before moping around like Batman. But then they hammer the point home. He's obviously the chosen one with these powers, the higher being, and he is going to be judged by the humans. But they literally have a shot where he's actually directly next to Jesus. How much more force can you get? Well, since I asked. Did they mention he's Jesus? Because he's Jesus! 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 He even poses in the form of a crucifix! They do have a nice moment where Lois, after being saved by him, starts to investigate similar stories and tracks down Clark's school bully and even his mum to find him, which is pretty interesting. And then she finds him. That was surprisingly fucking easy. There's some really smart choices in there too. Superman isn't even public yet, but General Zod shows up on Earth. 
apparently somehow becoming a slasher villain, shutting off all of the lights. But it's a lot more intense that this is actually how Superman gets revealed. Humans now find out that an evil deity is after them, but also that another one is already living among them. And then Perry White, played by Lawrence Fishburne, goes from categorically disbelieving in aliens to suddenly being convinced after a weird transmission on the TV. Now, have you seen him? Do you know where he is? No. But I don't get it. Soups is conflicted about whether or not to expose himself because he's not sure that Zod can be trusted, but... Well, even if he can't be trusted, the world's gonna end anyway. There's no win either way, dude! And then after two encounters, he wants to protect Lois because... Tits. I do love how they put him in handcuffs, though. But at least they make a joke out of it. Let's put our cards on the table here, General. And then... They're in love! All right, and it is a cool setup. The world isn't sure that they can trust Superman because he could eradicate all of them if he wanted to. This is something that wasn't really explored before. I mean, I guess Returns covered it briefly, but that was only because he fucked off to Cuba for five years and not because of his powers. This film does have some cool ideas hidden beneath the bollocks. General Zod would like this woman to accompany me. Why? 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 Answer me why, you piece of sh And of course, everyone has made fun of the sheer destruction in this film. It's ridiculous. I'm more annoyed that Superman doesn't even attempt to rip off Zod's mask during the fight, the dumbass. Even the army start destroying everything in sight. And you guessed it, even the fight scenes are boring. It's just bland, generic, smashy smash. I mean, there's a cool moment where he stops mid-fight to save someone, but then literally launches them into a train. Anyone could have been on there, Superman. You're a serial killer at this point. But to be fair, there is a nice moment where the citizens realize that Superman isn't their enemy after all. I can't wait for this to be completely disregarded for the next three films. There are some pretty sick shots of him flying up to stop the crashing ship. But look at this! World War II didn't have this many casualties! He's trebled Krypton's death count in 20 seconds! Even the climax is generic. Laser in the sky, loud bang bang! And how the hell does Zod have these powers anyway? The movie literally says that Superman has them after being exposed to the Earth's sun for so many years! Earth's sun is younger and brighter than Krypton's was. Your cells have drunk in its radiation, strengthening your muscles, your skin, your senses. But here, Zod is instantly just as powerful! You're a monster, Zod. And I'm gonna stop you. I really just heard that line. You know, with this and that line from The Dark Knight Rises. So you came back to die with your city. Maybe Christopher Nolan isn't this perfect genius that we all think he is, I'm just saying. I'm tired of this debate. Look at this, Osama Bin Laden would be jealous of this death toll. There's only one way this ends, Cal. Either you die, or I do. Well, yes. That's normally how this works. This dialogue sucks! But I can't lie, the chase scenes in the sky look insane. Before they brutally murder a bunch of innocent citizens, the music is also great, but... Now that I think about it, what exactly does Lois actually add to the film? She doesn't do anything! And of course, we get the one that freaked out comic book nerds everywhere. I'm not sure what's dumber, the fact that people cried over Superman murdering Zod to protect people despite him doing it much more brutally in the original, or the fact that there were so many other options, whether it be flying him away, knocking him out, flying the people to safety, throwing Zod out of the building, or the fact that a Kryptonian can be killed by a snapped neck! Are you effing stupid? Really, DC? Just cut the word all together! What are you doing? This movie sucks! It has some cool moments, but this movie sucks! It has cool ideas and the cinematography is mostly outstanding, but fuck me, it's boring, uncreative and generic. The characters are wooden, the dialogue is ass. It's like digging through a mound of horse crap to find a golden nugget, but at the end of it all, you're just covered in shit. And the gold is fake. Yeah, guys, this is gonna be a rough couple months. <laughs>